Praise the Lord, everyone. If the Lord be for us, who can be against us? Aren't you thankful for the Lord this morning? Come on, let's give him a hand clap of praise. I'm reminded of the scripture this morning. It's been on my heart. Everything that hath breath, praise ye the Lord. Can we take just a moment and give him some praise this morning to start this service out? Come on, let's usher him in this morning. Let's make him feel welcome in this house. When we begin to praise and we begin to sing unto him, there's a presence that begins to fill the room. And in his presence there is joy. In his presence there is peace. There is joy. There is hope. There is faith. Come on, do you need any of these things today? Do you need a breakthrough in your mind? Do you need a breakthrough in your body? Do you need a breakthrough in your situation? All you need to do is to begin to praise Him this morning and allow that presence to usher in. I'm excited to be in the house of the Lord. I hope you feel the same today. Uh, we have a great-looking crowd today. Let's give our guests a hand clap this morning. I'm so thankful for each of you that's here to worship with us today. Uh, we had a great time in the Lord Wednesday night. Uh, Brother James Morar was with us from India. I've, I thoroughly enjoyed getting to spend some time with him. Uh, but you know, I'm excited. God has seen fit to give us one more service. Give us one more opportunity to walk through these doors. I never want to take for granted just the simple of the assemblies together. It is so important. Scripture tells us that we're not supposed to forsake the assemblies of us together. Because you know, when we get in one mind and one accord, do you know what can take place? Strongholds can be broken. Healings can come forth. I've come expecting something today. I hope you believe the same this morning. Uh, we're going to go right into prayer this morning. I, um, funny story for you all. I was kind of a little elementary level this morning with the youth. You know, sometimes it's okay to slow down and teach them. Uh, but we learned a verse, Matthew 26 and 41. Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit is indeed willing, but the flesh is weak. I'm excited, and I know that prayer can change some things. I know when we begin to call on the name of the Lord, something begins to move, something begins to happen. I have a few requests I'm going to make known today. Sister Helen Sellers, uh, the Cantrell family, let's uplift them today. Carolyn Lloyd, uh, Sailor Smith, Imani Prather, uh, Chris Haley, uh, Mac Cooper. He's two or three, had both kidneys removed. Um, he's on dialysis and placed on a transplant list. That family desperately needs our prayers. We need to uplift them. You know, it doesn't matter what the doctor says. It doesn't matter what the scans say. It doesn't matter what the report says. Only thing that matters in the end is what God says. I believe in a God that can and that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we think or ask today. Amanda Martin, let's uplift her, having stents, praying for no clots. Uh, Charlotte Smith family, they're dealing with loss in their family. So we've got a very uh, variation of needs this morning. I know many of us today have situations and requests uh, that we need to make known. Also, Brother Khan, let's uplift him, that God would touch him and his body and his situation. If you have a need today, let it be known by the lifting of your hand. You know, I'm going to step out on faith today. If you need a touch in your body, if you need God desperately to move in a situation, I'm going to call our ministry team on standby. And if you want to be anointed today with oil, prayer works, people. You've come too late to tell me that prayer don't work. So if you need a, a need a touch today, come forth. God, we come before you this morning. God, you see every need that's been made known ever mentioned and that's went forth in this sanctuary. God, I know that I call upon a name that is more powerful than any name. God, you are above all. You're before all. There's none like you today. I pray for every sickness to be healed in Jesus' name. I pray for every disease to be fleed this morning. I pray for every demonic force that's coming against every mind and every home in this sanctuary. I rebuke it. 
under the authority and the power of the Word of God because we have the power and the authority to speak to those things uh, and they have to be cast aside. God, we pray that your anointing uh, would come forth in this very service. Uh, God, that you would move as only you can uh, in today's service, God. Have your will and have your way. Come on, church, can we give them a hand clap this morning? Oh, come on, do you believe that he's able? Do you believe that he can move the mountain today? Hallelujah. 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 God, we praise you. Come on, one more time. Give him a hand clap of praise this morning. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We're going to move into our tithes and our offerings You know, I, I feel in my spirit today that there is somebody that needs a touch. I'm not just speaking about her, but there is somebody that needs a healing in this house today. I believe this is okay to take a moment or two. You know, it's okay to be uncomfortable. We don't have to be on schedule this morning. God don't work on our time. If you need something in your life, the healer is in this place. The way maker is in this place this morning. Come on, saints. Don't miss out on your opportunity to be healed today. Don't miss out on your opportunity for God to change the report. Hallelujah. God, move right now, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Oh, Lord, have your way in this place, Lord. Let your healing virtue to come forth. God, I pray that you would move on every mind, on every heart. God, let them take that step of faith in obedience unto your word today. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, this is okay. Anybody that needs a touch today, anybody that needs a move of God in your life, hallelujah. Jesus, have your way, God. Have your way, Lord, right now, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. hate to know this morning that I knew that the man that could bring forth the healing or the touch in my life that it was here but I was just too afraid to move you know if we had the mindset of the woman with the issue of blood and she heard of Jesus making his way through town she said but if I can just touch the hem of his garment Guys, we don't have to just touch the hem today we can take hold of everything that God has to offer I've come to tell you 
and to encourage you that that same man, that same spirit that was inside of Jesus is here this morning for you. Let's give him a hand clap one more time. At this time, we're going to move into our tithes and our offerings. We're going to give back to the Lord, and uh, we do march. So if you have a need or you have an offering to give to God today, uh, just step on out and come forth and give your offering. Men of music, if you will. Thank you to all for giving today. Our worship team is getting ready to lead us. I know it seems like I've taken a little extra time this morning, but I want to leave us just with a quick thought, and I promise I'm getting out of the way. Uh, last night we had the opportunity to gather with the youth, and we had a nice little bonfire and everything going. We had a great time. And you know, I noticed as that fire began to burn, as it began to set, uh, sit longer and longer as time went by, that fire began to dwindle down. But you know, I grabbed a stick that was lying next to me and I began to poke that fire. I began to spread those ashes across that pit. And all of a sudden there was a rekindling that took place and that fire got hotter. And that fire got hotter and hotter. And you know, the Bible tells us to stir up the gifts that are within us. This morning, we need to do that exact thing. We have become comfortable and content where we are with God and in our life. We need to begin to poke that fire a little bit this morning. We need to begin to spread those ashes in our life and begin to watch that fire to rekindle once again. Let's worship with the worship team today.
praise the Lord, everybody. Can we give him a great hand clap of praise here this morning? Come on, can we give him a great hand clap of praise here this morning? He is great, and he is greatly to be praised. I want to thank him for what he's already done here today. But I also want to have expectation that he's not finished, but he's just beginning. He's just getting started. Maybe somebody needs to hear that this morning. He's not done with you. Come on. He's not done with you. He's just getting started. I like what I feel here this morning. You can be seated in Jesus' name. I want to thank you for being here in service. Thank you for choosing our church to come and uh, to worship the Lord. I hope you feel at home this morning. Uh, to all of our guests that are here with us today, God bless you. Can we give our guests a hand clap, make them feel welcome? And to all of our church family who is faithful, uh, always here, always serving, uh, always encouraging, I want to let you know that I love you. Uh, we enjoyed a great time away this, uh, this week as we traveled around uh, the state of Colorado, such a great time we had, beautiful time we had, and uh, I want to thank you for letting me do that. I want to thank you for allowing me to travel. I want to thank you for being not just people that I preach to. I want to thank you for being God's people. I want to thank you for loving me, loving my family. Uh, I want to thank you for the gift that uh, y'all gave us for pastor's appreciation. And so as you show me appreciation, I want to show you appreciation. But I hope that I always do a good job of showing you appreciation. I may not do it all the time to the best of my ability. I want to let you know that I love you and I appreciate you uh, and that I thank God for you. And I do believe this is God's hour. I do believe that our greatest days are ahead. But just because they're ahead does not mean that we're not having great days today. And so I believe that this is one of the best hours to be in the church. And if you're not in, you might as well choose to get in. This is a good place to go to heaven from. It's not the only place, but it's a good place. And we would love for you to become part of our family. So I wish you would just give yourself a great hand clap and thank yourself for being the greatest church in the world. I love you. So thankful for you. Uh, I would like to bring our reading today to the book of Matthew as I begin a uh, message this morning. I hope to uh, encourage somebody in the Holy Ghost today. I, I hope to uh, have you leaving this place, not by my ability, but by God's Word and the Spirit of God. To, you to leave here strengthened and encouraged today and leave here different. Uh, than the way that you came. The book of Matthew chapter 13. I want to begin with verse 24. The Bible says, Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. With every good cause, the enemy likes to bring division among us. The Bible says, but when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. So when the good came, uh, there was also some bad that sprung up as well. And so the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir or master, did you not know that you sowed good seed in the field. Why or from whence hath it tares? He said unto them, An enemy hath done this. And the servant said, Wilt thou then that we go and gather them up? And he said, No, lest while you gather up the tares are in the midst of trying to take care of all the bad. He said, You'll root up also the wheat with them. He said, let both grow together until the harvest. And in the time of harvest, I'll say to the reapers, gather ye together first the tares. So let me take care of the bad first. 
and bind them up in bundles to burn them. He said, but put or gather the wheat into my barn. And so this morning for the next little bit, I just want to simply preach. Simple title. It's the most simple title ever. I just want to talk about together. Together. Will you pray with me if it's, if it's appropriate? Grab hands of the person next to you. Let's pray together. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we have gathered together here in your name. And we know that you are in the midst. God, I pray in the name of Jesus that while your word goes forth today, that there will be a great unifying among the people of God. I pray this morning there would be a great reconciliation. There would be a great renewal. There would be a great resurfacing, God, of unity among the people of God. Use me, God, as I hide myself behind the cross and preach Christ. It's in Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Thank you for standing for the word. You can be seated in Jesus' name here this morning. This is a parable that I very much love, but it's a parable that challenges our thinking or it challenges our ways that we want to do things. The Bible tells us that uh, it's comparing the kingdom of heaven to a man who had a seed and many seeds that he wanted to sow into a field. And as he begun to sow, there came a time where he wasn't out there that an enemy came and planted some tares among the wheat. I, I need you to understand today that there's a difference between tares and wheat. Tares look a lot like wheat. But they're not. Can I tell somebody that there's always going to be some tares among the wheat? That's just how it goes. There's always going to be, as they say, some hypocrites in the church. There's always going to be some backbiters in the church. There's always going to be people in the church that don't see it the same way you see it. And so the servants came and told the master, said, I thought you only planted good things in this field. Now some of you may have came to this church expecting that everything's perfect and in order and everybody lives just the way the scripture tells us to live and everybody talks just the way the scripture tells us to talk and act like that way and they thought, hey, if this man plants a field, we're going to have no problems reaping a good harvest. But what they did not know was that every field that's planted, there's always going to be some things contained in that field that is not ideal for the time of harvest. And so they came to the master and said, why don't we pull up these tares? Let's get the bad out of the church. Let's get the bad out of the field. Let's take care of it. But the master with his wisdom and his way of thinking said, You've got a good idea there for the moment. But what you don't understand is that if a tear is close enough to one of the wheat, when you go in to pull up the tares, there may be a couple pieces of wheat that falls victim to the process. In your pursuit to try to make the church perfect, you may ruin some good people who want to do right and want to live right and want to do everything that God tells them to do. There may be some casualties in your pursuit to trying to make the church exactly the way you want it. I want to tell somebody today the church will never be perfect. The church has never been perfect until the coming of the Lord will always have problems, will always have disagreements, and will always have issues. But the master looked to the servants and said, Hey, just let them grow together and I'll take care of it in the end. I want to tell somebody we can spend time looking across the pew at what somebody else is doing wrong and they're doing things that we don't like or we can say, hey, we'll just keep doing what the Word tells us to do and we're going to let the Lord take care of it in the end. I come to encourage us today. That if we want to become the field of harvest that is pleasing to God, we're going to have to do it together. 
There's just no other way to do it because in our pursuit to make a church perfect, in the end, we'll end up destroying what the good master has planted and has given us in this place. Hey, you might be in the destroying business, but I'm not in the destroying business. I want to see things grow. I want to see things be planted and take root and produce fruit. Hey, come on, somebody. I need you to help me today. I need you to get encouraged in the Holy Ghost. The book of John tells us in chapter 4, I might just have to preach today. I I just might have to do. John chapter 4 verse 35. Jesus was talking to the people. And he said, say not ye, there are yet four months and then cometh harvest. Jesus didn't really like time schedules. He said, You're basing your harvest off of a schedule. But he said, if you'll lift up your eyes, if you'll quit looking at everything else and lift up your eyes, I know you're busy. I know you got everything going on. I know you think there's a specific time that I'm going to show up. And I know you think there's a specific time that he's going to be ready or or she's going to be ready or they're going to be ready. But I just need you to lift up your eyes and look on the fields. Why do we need to look? Because they're white and they're all ready to harvest. Jesus was trying to make them understand that if you base everything off of time and a time schedule, I can never give you the harvest that is meant for you to have. What I'm trying to tell you today is if we wait to the perfect time to see a lost soul saved, we're going to be too late and hell's going to be way too wide. Jesus said, open up your eyes. Look up and see. I want to encourage this church today and to tell you it's time we open up our eyes and see that there is a field that is white and is ready for harvest. And if we sit around twiddling our thumbs, waiting on God to say go, we may never see the revival that God has intended for our church. If you wait to the perfect moment to witness to that family member, it may be too late. If you wait to the perfect moment to put your arm around a struggling brother and sister and let them know you love them, it may be too late. Lift up your eyes and get to work. Encourage them now. Reach for them now. Preach to them now. It's already Ready to harvest. If we wait too long, it'll be too late. He said, and he that reapeth uh, receiveth wages and gathereth fruit unto life eternal. Look what happens here. He said that both he that soweth and he that reapeth uh, may rejoice together. If we're going to see revival and a harvest that God has intended for our church, it's going to take planters and it's going to take reapers. There's going to be some work that is involved and every two person is not going to be the same. We can't expect a person that God has formed for reaping to be a planter. And we cannot expect a a reaper that God has planned for for something else. Look, we can't expect somebody to be somebody that they're not. 
And what I mean by that is we can't expect somebody who can't teach to be a Sunday school teacher. We can't expect somebody who can't preach to be a preacher. But I come to encourage you today that if everybody will find a spot that God has intended them to be in, there will be a Holy Ghost party in the end. Brother Keith, can I have a little bit more on this mic? My voice is kind of low today. He said, if he that soweth and he reapeth, in the end they're going to rejoice and they're going to do it together. They're not going to bicker. One's not going to look at the other and say, hey, I spent all my time planning and you're over here reaping. Why don't you come do some of mine? No, no, no. Because the Bible says in the end, they'll both look at each other's work and say, hey, we did it together. I want this church to know today, if we're going to do it, we're going to have to do it together. If we're going to see the coming of the Lord in his full glory, we're going to have to do it together. I'm trying to unify us and tell us today that we're not all going to be the same. We're not all going to look the same. We're not all going to act the same. But if we want to see revival, we're going to have to do it together. In the book of John chapter 20, verse 19, this was after the death of Jesus. This was a time... Nobody really wanted to live in. The Christ had died. And not only did he die, but he died a gruesome death. And let me tell somebody that gruesome death was for you and I. That shedding of blood was for you and I. That burial in the tomb was for you and I. And they stood there. And the Bible said the same day at evening being the first day of the week. It was the first day of the week. Why do you think we come to church on Sunday? We get together the first day of the week. The doors were shut and the disciples were assembled together for the fear of the Jews. And something happened. Jesus came and stood in the midst and said unto them, Peace be unto you. I need you to understand today that when God's people get together, God can't help but show up. When God's people get together, there can't help but a healing take place. Come on, when God's people get together in my name, he said, I'm going to be in the midst of them. You thought you'd just come to church because it was popular. I come to church to see the miraculous moving of the power of the Holy Ghost. I don't come in to twiddle my thumbs. I don't come in to say hi to you and pat you on the back. I come in to entertain the presence of the Lord and to see what he'll do for us. I come in to praise him. I come in to glorify him. He showed up and he showed them his hands and his side. Then his disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. But Jesus said again to them, Peace be unto you. And he breathed on them and said, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Whosoever sins you remit, they're remitted unto them. And whosoever sins you retain, they are retained. But look what happened. But Thomas, one of the twelve, called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. And the other disciples therefore said unto him, we have seen the Lord. But he said unto them, Except I shall see in his hands the print of the nails and put my finger into the print of the nails and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. The people of God decided to gather together, but there was one that decided not to be in his presence. And can I tell you the first gathering that Thomas decided to miss was the first gathering that Jesus showed up on the scene. You don't think it's important to come to church? 
that service, you may decide to hit snooze on that alarm clock or just wipe your eyes and say, I don't really feel like going today. That could be the very service that God decides to show up in the midst of the people of God and let you know that he died on a cross for your sins. Why do you think scripture tells us as Brother Tanner's already stated forsake not the assembling of yourselves together even the much more as you see the day approach but there's a verse right in the middle of that verse and it says exhort one another We don't talk about that much. Hey, you thought you was just assembling to get together. No, no, no. The reason we got to be together is because when the people of God get together, there's strength that's in the midst of the house of God. He said exhort. You know what exhort means? It means encourage. Hey, if you're discouraged, that's no excuse to stay home. This is the perfect place that you need to be. If you're facing depression, if you're facing anxiety, if you're facing fear, if you're facing addiction, it's no time to stay at home by yourself. It's time to get up and get your clothes on and say, I'm going to assemble together with the people of God. But you know why? Maybe... A lot of people don't come when they don't ain't acting right, they ain't living right. The devil convinces them that this is going to be the place they definitely don't need to be. They're going to see that new piercing. They're going to see that new tattoo. They're going to see it in your eyes that you're hungover. They're going to see that you're struggling. Hey, I come to tell this church today that if we do see it and if we do acknowledge it, Scripture does not say to condemn one another. It says to exhort one another. I come to tell you if they walk in and decide to be here, you better wrap your arms around them and say thank God. God that you showed up today. Thank God that you decided to come to the house of the Lord today. It's not time to push them away. It's not time to condemn them. They may not look like you. They may not smell like you. You may have saw their Snapchat, their Instagram, and their Facebook post. But if they decided to show up, you better let them know that we're thankful they're here. I'm not saying you got to hang out with them on the weekends. I'm not saying you got to get buddy buddy with them. But you need to let them know if there's anybody that can help them, Jesus can help them. Come on, let's clap for the Lord. Come on, let's clap our hands to the Lord. They come to Thomas. Said, hey, bud, we just saw the Lord. Just saw his nail prints. Just saw the pierce in his side. Thomas looked at him. And he said, hey, I don't care what you saw until I see it myself. Until I touch it myself. There's no way that I can believe it. Hey, I need you to understand today. Somebody else, they can't base their belief off of an experience that only you have had. I don't care if 10 out of the 11 got it. There was one who wasn't there that day. What are you trying to say, preacher? I'm trying to tell you, I know you're convinced, but they're not convinced yet. I know you see it in the word as clear as day, but it's still a little fuzzy and blobby to them. They don't understand it just yet. Hey, you can't expect them to see something that their eyes have not been open to yet. 
What are you saying? I'm saying you can't condemn them for not being there when they didn't experience it. When they get to it, the Bible says, Thomas said, I don't believe it. Now, to some of us, this may seem like a light thing, but this was a doctrinal issue because Thomas denied the very resurrection of the Christ. And without a resurrection, we could have none. Without a resurrection, there could be no infilling of the power of the Holy Ghost. And Thomas said, I don't see it the way you do. Can I tell you, we're going to have some doctrinal disagreements. We're going to have some disagreements among us. But I want to I make you understand something. That the Bible says when Thomas said, I disagree. They didn't say, you no longer can be in the circle. You no longer can come to the church. You can no longer attend the gatherings. But the Bible says, after eight days... Just eight days. It didn't take eight months. It didn't take eight years. Just eight days. The Bible says again, his disciples were within. And look what it iterates and says. And Thomas was with them. If they would have condemned Thomas for not seeing it the way they saw it and said, you're not allowed to come, Thomas couldn't have been in the house. But I believe those disciples got together and said, hey, if we're going to gather together, we need to let Thomas know that he's welcome to come join us. And I come to echo to this church today that if you want to come here, you're welcome to come here. If you want to come worship with us, you're welcome to worship. If you want to come and sit on our pew, you are welcome here. I know you may not see it like I see it, and I sure don't see it like you see it. But hey, when we get together, despite the disagreements, despite not seeing eye to eye, Jesus said, I'm going to show up. I'm going to be there. I'm not here for you. I'm here for him. I'm here to get my miracle. Thomas was with them. I want to tell you, I'm thankful you're here this morning. I'm thankful you didn't obey the lie that said, hey, you can just stay in bed this morning. I'm thankful you didn't listen to the thoughts in the back of your mind that may have said, I don't look exactly like they look. They may look at me funny. They may talk behind my back. I want to thank you for pushing all that out of the way and say, I'm still going to come in to the house of the Lord because when Thomas showed up then came Jesus the doors were shut they were all by themselves and all of a sudden Jesus showed up in the midst I want to remind you of something Jesus knew that Thomas didn't believe that he resurrected from the dead. But I'm going to tell you something. He didn't let that stop him from showing up. Jesus understands where you and I sin. Jesus understands that you and I may have made some mistakes this week that we're not proud of. He understands that you and I have failed in countless ways and we know in our hearts today, some of us, that we're not living exactly like we've lived. And Jesus still, with all those thoughts in mind, said if Thomas is there, I gotta be there. If there's an unbeliever among them, I gotta be there. Because I'm not willing that any should perish, but that all would come to repentance. My love is greater than their iniquity. 
My death was greater than their unbelief. And so why I don't have to, I don't have to show up in the midst of that place today, but because Thomas is there and I love him so much, I'm going to show up smack dab in the midst of that house and have an interaction with him. Let me tell you why you need to keep coming to church despite your feelings, despite what you want to do, despite thoughts of quitting. It could be the very service that God says, I got to get down there. This is the one Sunday that they decided to come. Can I tell you, they may only come one Sunday. They may only come one church service. They may only decide to come once. But if they're there, if they're here, I want God to show up in a miraculous way. And he can't do that if we keep them on the outside of the house. They got to be here. They got to be assembled together with the people of God. Here's what happened. Suddenly, I want to remind you of something. We sometimes fault Thomas. He's called Doubting Thomas. But it was sort of hypocritical because I need you to understand the writing of the scripture. The Bible said Jesus showed up to the disciples. Do you know what he done? He showed them his hands. Showed him aside. It took sin for them to believe too. I don't want us to forget what kind of experience it took us to turn our lives around. Hey, I know we've been in it for years. I know we've seen the miraculous. I know we've been hurt. I know we went through pain. But we can't get out of our minds and, and call somebody just an unbeliever in a horrible way, in a doubter, in a horrible way. When the Bible says in such were some of us. It took an experience for me to understand that there was a God who loved me so desperately and greatly. It took an experience for me to understand that there was still life after my mess. It took an experience to make me understand that despite my past, God still had a purpose and a plan for me. So what am I saying? Let's be patient with them until the experience comes. Let's be patient with them till God shows up smack dab in the middle of their world. Thomas touched my scars. I'm here. I'm here. Take your finger. Feel my hands. Feel my side. I want you to believe. I want you to know that I died for you. Can I tell somebody today? With everything inside of me, God wants you to know today he was the one. It was him. It was not another. He wants you to understand today. That it's not just our imagination. It's not just a fairy tale. It's not just a historical story. But God robed himself in flesh and was a man. And he came down and the Bible said he who knew no sin but came sin for you and I. Hey, I want to let you know that he really did stand before the people and they wanted to crucify him. I want to let you know he really did get the stripes on his back. There was a crown of thorns on his head. A spear did go in his side and nails did go in his hands. There was a cross. They did spit on him and they did mock on him. Hey, blood ran down his brow and he gave up the ghost. Hey, he didn't just do that for me, but he did it for you. I know, 
I know it's hard for you to understand how a God could die for a wretch like you. But I want to tell you, I understand because I was a wretch just like you. And in the eyes of God, I still am a wretch. I deserve to bust hell wide open. Oh, but there was a God who loved me so much that he gave his only begotten son. Thomas, he's here today. Thomas, he showed up for you. Thomas, he loves you. I want to tell somebody today, let's not keep Thomas from coming. Thomas disagrees with our theology. Hey, let's not keep him from coming. Thomas don't believe that you got to be baptized in the only saving name of Jesus Christ. He's still welcome here. Because you got to understand, as much as God loves you and I, he loves Thomas. As much as he loves with that old biker or that old skateboarder who comes in with his spiked up hair, comes in with his long ponytail down his rear end. I know he don't look like you. I know he don't dress like you. Hey, but God died for Thomas just like he died for you and me. And he can't be saved unless we open up the door and say, get in the house. I know, hey, this don't fit your theology. This don't fit your tradition. But if they want to be saved, I want them to be here. You know why? Because they are a part of the harvest. You may see a wretch, but Jesus said, look again. It's white harvest. You may see somebody that you say there's no way in a million years that they'll ever be converted. But Jesus said, now's the perfect time. He's ready. She's ready. That boy's ready. I know he don't look right. He don't talk right, but he's ready. Let me tell you a quick story. My wife used to work at a grocery store. I try to tell this story the right way. There was a boy who used to work there. Made fun of him. Mocked Pentecostal doctrine, religion. That's okay, hey. That's going to come. Get over it. Get over it. Part of the plan. <clears throat> She worked with a lot of people over the years. I'm sorry, I'm trying to get my breath back. Colorado got my wind. I'm going to get it back. She said, wasn't too long ago, she ran into him. You know what he is now? He's a Pentecostal preacher. I believe any baby's a preacher or he goes to a Pentecostal church. Goes to a Pentecostal church. You know what her words to me was? Out of all the people I worked with, he was the very last one that I would have ever thought that God could do something with. Hey, when we said he wasn't ready, God said the field is white with harvest. It's time to go get them. It's time to let them know this is the place of salvation. But we got to do it together. I feel like God is wanting to begin to start a revival here in this church. But we can't do it the old way. Well, the old way works. Sure it does. But hey, brother. Just because somebody ain't living right and doing right, they come in here, see us. We can't shake the devil out of them as soon as they come in the room. Why? Because they ain't feeling what you're feeling, brother. I know you feel the Holy Ghost all over you, but they may be as dry and as dead as a stick laying out in the forest. 
So you know you what what's got to happen? You love them. You shake their hand. You hug their neck. You let them know, hey, don't forget we got church again on Wednesday. Why? Because when it hits them and when they feel it, there's going to be no more denying. There's going to be no more doubting. They'll know that this is the way. The Bible tells us in the book of Mark chapter 3. I'm hurrying. And if a kingdom be divided against itself that kingdom cannot stand <clears throat> and if a house be divided against itself that house cannot stand what I believe God wants to do in this hour I believe he wants to unify the church I didn't say conform the church don't misunderstand me he wants to unify the church to unify the church. You want to see it? No, I know, I know I want to know. I want you to think about it. You want to see it. You want to see it happen. You want to see the glory of God fall down in this place. The kingdom of heaven could not be fulfilled until Peter went to the house of Cornelius and said, God is no respecter of person. Peter had good church. They had good church in the temple. They had good church at Jerusalem, but they forgot there was a whole nother group of people. The Bible said Cornelius was a devout man. Feared God, gave much homes and offering before the Lord. His house feared God. But he wasn't of the right pedigree. He wasn't a Jew by lineage. He didn't have all the things that the Jews had. But Jesus said, when I hung on that rugged cross, I didn't die for a pedigree. I didn't die for a color. I died for every creature that has breath and life and a soul in their body. That's why Paul, after preaching to Cornelius when Peter was at his house, there was some time that passed by. And let me explain something to you. Paul showed up. I believe it was in the book of Galatians. You know what he done? He rebuked Paul. Or Paul rebuked Peter. You know why? Because Peter preached that God was no respecter of person. But if there was somebody who wasn't circumcised that came into Jerusalem, Peter wouldn't eat with them. They had the same Holy Ghost. They had the same love that had been showed to them. And what Paul told Peter was, you are confusing everybody. You told them that God's no respecter of person. Yet when they come in your presence, you look at them like they're the scoundrel of the earth. Can I tell somebody today, you know that blood that's flowing through your veins? That's the same blood that's flowing through their veins. Hey, you know all those sins that God forgave you from? He's wanting to forgive theirs just like he forgave yours. I'm trying to make you understand. I'm going to preach this book. I'm going to preach it hard. And I'm going to be bold. But I'm here to love people. And I'm here to see heaven filled up by the hundreds of millions. And we cannot do that sitting on our thumbs and having pretty patty cake church. We got to go and reach this world. Stand to your feet all across the house. Jesus, 
Why show up for Thomas? Why? Because he was a part of the plan. When I chose him the first time, I didn't just choose him temporarily. Let me talk to you that have drifted away. Drifted back. Maybe there was some confusion between Thomas and the rest of the brethren. Maybe there were some disagreements. I don't know. I not to be. I want to let somebody know, despite the disagreements, despite the things that we may not see eye to eye on, if we're going to do it, Brother Hunter, we got to do it together. I didn't just ordain 10 of the disciples to go and preach this gospel to every creature. Thomas was a part of the equation. I come to tell somebody today, do not let things that you don't see eye to eye on keep you from operating in the purpose and the plan that God has for you. Thomas, I know you don't see it the same way, but don't quit coming. Thomas, I know you don't see eye to eye on everything we may preach and we may believe, but I want to let you know as long as you want to, these doors are open. And I believe with everything in me that God shows up in this place. This is where He saved my soul. This is where He made me whole. I want to encourage you, Thomas. God loves you. He cares for you. Can we? Here's what I want us to do if, for all that want to. Let's gather to the front. I don't care if this is your first Sunday or not. We want you to come. Look, look, we're, we're, we're not trying to do nothing crazy. I just want everybody to come and gather. Oh, come gather. Stand here, stand here, stand here. I want to talk to everybody. Come on, come on, come on, everybody. We're going to do it together. We're better together. We're going to pray together. We're going to fast together. I want to see the coming of the Lord together. Come on, gather, gather, gather. Hey, don't stay in the back if you don't want you. You don't have to come. But I want to pray for a spirit of unity among us. If you can, if it's appropriate, either put your arm around the person next to you or grab their hand or just lay a hand on their back. Connect with somebody. If you see somebody not connected, connect with them. We're about to pray right now. And I'm going to pray that every disturbance, every bygone, everything that has happened to us, every disagreement, that God would heal it right now. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I break every bond, I break every chain of division and disagreement, God. We're gathering together as a body of believers, and I pray you let revival come. I pray you'd break forth from these walls like rivers of living water. Come on, I need you to pray with me today. Pray for unity. Pray for revival. Pray for the outpouring of the Holy Ghost. Come on, the devil wants us to get us alone. He wants to get you by yourself. He wants to get you hurt and in a corner. Hey, but we refuse for that to happen. We are more than conquerors together. Come on, let's break through this morning. Pray for the person next to you. God, heal them. God, restore them. God, fill them with the Holy Ghost. Oh, come on, somebody take Sister Wilbanks by the hand. He told Moshe, be healed in the name of Jesus. 
Come on, somebody take her by the hand. Hey, healer God. Healer God. We pray together. We pray together. We pray together. If you need a breakthrough today, come on. You can get it. Depression be broken, Jesus' name. Ah, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Come on, the Bible says if one be overtaken in a fault, restore such a one. Come on, we're not in the business of casting down. We're in the business of restoration. Restoration takes time. But he said, you got to restore them. you got to encourage them in the Holy Ghost. Woman of God, be encouraged. I know you messed up, but be encouraged. Man of God, I know you're struggling. I know you're going through temptations, but be encouraged. Let God restore you. Clap our hands into the Lord and magnify Him. I want us to do it together. Thomas, don't stay home, bub. Thomas, if there's a prayer meeting, get there. If there's a youth gathering, get there. There's a ladies' meeting. Get there. I know you feel out of place. I, I know you think they're going to look at you different for who you are, but you're not there for them. You're there for you. We're not here to show off our Sunday best. We're here to grow in strength and love and admonition of the Lord. Don't get in a corner if I can encourage somebody today. I'm preaching to myself. But just be honest, I'm hurrying. I know you want to go eat. Some of my toughest battles are me having a fight with myself. Don't get alone. Go to the meeting. Go to the church service. I know you're tired. I know you don't feel like it. I know you're hurt. I know you're facing hell. But if you stay alone... with two or three let me remind you what the Bible says Peter and John it said went up together to the hour of prayer they knew if we'll get together if we'll agree things can happen Brother Tanner's going to come and pray for us this morning don't return to your seats just stand here we're going to pray and we're going to dismiss I want us to pray together I want Brother Tanner to pray a unifying prayer don't forget, we've got our family weekend coming up. We'll have details about that. Some of you may have seen it on Facebook. We'll have some details about that. Will you lift your hands as Brother Tanner comes to pray? Let's ask God to touch us today. God, we come before you right now, Lord. God, I pray for every mind. I pray for every soul right now, Lord. God, that unify us together. Lord, we are stronger together. God, I pray if there be any discord among us today, God, that you would diminish it. God, completely get rid of it, God. If we have a problem with one another, Lord, let us show love above all else. God, help us to love as you love. I pray, Lord, that whatever storm may come, whatever problem may arise, that a standard would come up about our church. God, I pray that there would be numbers to come in a hundredfold, God, to come from our community because we simply have showed the love of God. I pray you would protect us. 
God, let us be stronger as we come each and every meeting into your house. God, protect us from this day forward. And God, bring us back at your next appointed time. In Jesus' name we all pray. Let us say amen. You're dismissed in Jesus' name.